Hey guys, Dave with First Place Auto Parts here today. Thanks for joining me. At First Place Auto Parts, we're a lot like you are. And by that, I mean we're enthusiasts too. And we have cars in our garages that we're wrenching on, that we're driving and we're taking the shows into drag strips all around the country. My case, I have a 1956 Chevrolet Gaster that I've owned for over 15 years. I've owned a lot of muscle cars before this car, 70 Chevelle, 68 Mustangs, you name it, I've owned it. But this car by far is the one that I enjoy the most and the reason is it encapsulates everything I've ever wanted in a hot rod. So today's video, we're gonna take a walk around my car, show you some of the things that I've done to my car to make it unique. And I'd love to hear your comments on anything that you'd have done differently. So let's go ahead and get started, see what makes this beast tick and start walking around. Hey guys, if you like today's video, please consider subscribing to the First Place Auto Parts YouTube channel. We're going to continually be adding new videos every week where we show you how to put new parts on, we take a look at the latest parts that are available, and we go to some pretty cool car guy stuff I'm pretty sure you're going to want to see. From the outside of my car, it looks a lot different than a stock Tri-5 Chevrolet. First of all are the colors. This is a, actually a Mopar color, a lemon twist yellow and a basic white. Um, also, you'll notice the front end sits up higher than what a stock tri fi Chevrolet would. Back in the 60s, the gassers, which were the precursor to the funny cars, the tire technology had yet to keep up with the horsepower. So what they did is they raised the front end of the cars up to try to get as much weight on the back tire as possible. Now, my front end is elevated. Sometimes you'll see uh, straight axles underneath these cars. My car has ball joint spacers and station wagon springs that lifts the front end up. Uh, but I've also lowered the rear end about two inches using uh, two inch lowering leaf springs and have moved the springs inboard of the frame to give me the clearance that I needed to put the larger rear wheels and tires. Those are actually 10 inch reverse offset Kreger wheels and then you can also see the rear disc brakes that I recently converted to which you can also find on a previous video that I've done. But this car is actually, um, it, for all intents and purposes, is recognizable as a 56 Chevrolet but it looks a lot different. Moving to the front of the car, you can see that I've removed the front bumper, which is pretty much standard for the gassers of the era. The bumpers weighed a ton on these cars, so that was jettisoned. In its place is a frame spreader bar that keeps the front frame structurally rigid, but also gave a place to pull the car from back in the day. Um, the rest of the front's pretty standard, except for the Thunderbolt hood scoop that I've grafted onto the hood. And when I open the hood, you're going to understand why I needed that clearance. But the Thunderbolt hood scoop, typically associated with Ford cars, really fits the vibe of the car. Um, they were pretty common back in the day. It helps expel a lot of heat and also at the drag strip. Uh, I get a lot of air under the front of this car. Um, I'm not saying the front end feels ultra light, but the steering does get light at around 120 miles an hour. The Thunderbolt hood scoop with the uh, screens in the back of it helps expel some of the, uh, the air underneath the hood, but also the engine heat. My wheels of choice are Kregers. I've always been a Kreger guy. I, I love the way they look still and I love the way they look when they're spinning. I did upgrade this car to disc brakes. Um, I can tell you the drum brakes worked okay until they got wet. Also with the drag strip, what I was finding was I had a tremendous amount of brake fade. I went ahead back and put front disc brakes on this car back when conversion kits weren't available. I mocked up a, uh, a set of A-body large GM A-body calipers and a two-piece rotor to, uh, to make a kit for this. But uh, shoot, today you can get a ton of different types of disc brake conversion kits for these cars from first place auto parts that probably work better than these, but these are satisfactory. The rear wheels on this car are a 10-inch reverse offset Kreger. And to do that, I had to move the, the leaf springs inboard of the frame and section my inner fender wells and drop the rear end of the car down. Now, I have extended wheel studs on this and I have converted the brakes to a rear disc brake conversion kit offered by First Place Auto Parts. The tires themselves are pretty cool. They are a reproduction Pie Crush Cheater Slick and they get their name Pie Crush from the edges, right? These look like the old Pie Crust that Grandma used to make when she would tuck the crust over the pan. There's a company out of North Carolina that makes these tires to this day. They use the original M&H molds, which is way cool. The rear tread, look, it's a slick. It has two grooves carved into it uh, to make it street legal, but this is a slick tire, no doubt. Um, don't ever drive these in the rain. Uh, they're ultra slippery, and if you drive over any stones at all, you're gonna hear them up inside your inner fender wells, but they actually get decent traction and they definitely fit the, the look and the vibe of the car. And from the back of my car, this thing looks pretty standard uh, until you notice that the license plate isn't mounted on the trunk below the key lock. The original Tri-5 Chevrolets in 1956 
had the license plate mounted just beneath the lock on the back trunk. This is actually a station wagon bumper that allows you to take the, the license plate from the lock area and move it down to the bumper. It cleans up the back of the car a ton and also gives it a little bit of a custom vibe. Also, you may notice that I've installed a, an electrical shutoff switch in my rear tail light area. When I take this car to the drag strip, you have to, because it's an NHRA track, you have to be, have a place, if you have the trunk and the battery, which I do, you've got to give them an ability to put, turn the power on and off. So I, I hid this, that little um, emblem right there, or the reflector is super cheap to replace if I ever wanted to change it back, which I won't. But uh, it just kind of hides the, uh, the, the electrical cutoff switch in an area that's kind of in, inconspicuous, uh, but is easy to get to. The interior of my car, well, it's anything but stock. It's got a set of early 60s Impala front bucket seats that have been recovered in vinyl with tuck and roll. The dash is pretty stock. It's got the Bel Air trim, even though this was not a Bel Air. I mounted the tachometer on the dash, but I didn't drill holes in it. What I did is I actually used double-sided tape to keep the tack, and it's been up there for 10 years. So um, that tack isn't going anywhere, and I didn't have to destroy the paint to do it, which is kind of neat. And also, this car is a 5-speed. I put a Tremec TKO 600 in this to get the 5th gear. I got tired of coming back from the drag strip, turning 3,000 RPMs, going 60 miles an hour, and getting run over on the interstate. So, 5th gear has given me that ability to actually drive this car a long way and not get run over and keep up with traffic. Plus, it, it helps the motor out not turning so many RPMs. You'll also see that this car has line lock on it, a line lock button. What that does is it locks the front wheels if you want to do a burnout at the drag strip or heat up the tires or on the street if it's legal where you live. But uh, the line lock is pretty cool. It's easy to grab when you're uh, when you got your hand on the shifter. And then I've also, um, because this car did not have seat belts and at the drag strip they require seat belts, I put some duckbill safety belts in the car. So, um, you know, very robust. They're easy to use. They're comfortable, big and wide, and a uh, little bit of safety there. And perhaps one of the biggest changes this car is what I'm about to lift up. And that is a tilt front end. Now, when this car was built, fiberglass tilt front ends for Chevrolets, for 56 Chevrolets, were not available. So what I had to do was I had to take a, the hood, the original hood and the original fenders, and graft them together, which required some welding and some smoothing and things of that nature. But these are the steel original hood and fenders on this car. So uh, it's super light, well balanced, the hood opens easily. And once the hood is open, what you have is a 454 Chevrolet, a 30 over, which is actually a 468 big block, running a tunnel ram intake with two four barrel carburetors and fender well headers. Now this motor is super reliable and it runs pretty quick, makes about 500, 550 horsepower. I'll tell you what I've learned about tuning tunnel ram carburetors and tunnel rams on the street. Uh, if you ever have any questions, let me know. I can tell you this, tunnel rams can work on the street and be streetable. This car will idle and run and not overheat all day long here in the heat and humidity of Georgia. So it is absolutely possible. But it's a roller motor, it has roller cam, roller lifters. Uh, the heads are, um, they're oval port heads, but they're ported and have big valves and beehive springs. So it's just a good, reliable combination. So it's a lot of fun. Doesn't pass many gas stations, but it certainly creates a lot of smiles when I go by and when I drive it. And from this angle, you can see the back side of the hood. What I love about a tilt front end is it makes it super easy to work on this motor. When I adjust the valves, what I'll do is I'll set my beer right about here. I'll sit on my tire. I'll pull the valve cover off, and then when I'm adjusting valves, I've got a seat, I've got a drink, and I've got my tool. So tilt front ends are cool. If you ever have a car with a tilt front end, you're going to say it was the best thing ever invented. I guarantee it. All right, guys, that concludes the walk around my car. If you have any questions about the parts I used, how or why I did something, or better yet, if you have some sort of an idea of what you'd have done differently on my car, let me know all that in the comments section. If you have questions, I'll reply, but I'd love to hear your comments and your suggestions. Until next time, keep the hammer down and keep between the guardrails.